your host, Michael Cohen, with the Capital City Recap on more compelling talk radio, 1320 WILS. 632 Michael Cohen, 1320 WILS. By the way, if you have any comments, questions, send us a quick email, ccrecap at gmail.com, ccrecap at gmail.com. So have you ever tried calling Comcast for anything, let alone trying to disconnect service? Well, one customer did just that recently, and what he did was record this conversation. It's now gone viral to talk about uh, what occurred. We're joined by Gail Goodman. She's a communications expert online finder at phoneteacher.com. Gail, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for inviting me. The, uh, the, well, let's begin. Let's first hear a clip here. We'll begin with a clip. This is the customer uh, essentially telling the, this rep, here, here's why I've called you. We'd like to discuss, please. Okay, so why is it that you don't want the faster speed? Help me understand why you don't want faster internet. Help me understand why you can't just disconnect us. Because my job is to have, is to have a conversation with you about having about this. I mean, keeping your service, about finding out why it is that you're looking to cancel the service. Okay, so I mean, they, now, Gail, this is not the beginning of the conversation, right? This is no. How, how far? What what had happened before that? From what you know. Well, I've heard one story that the wife tried to disconnect it and got so disgusted with this person that she handed the phone to her husband, who then proceeded to record it. So whatever you hear on the Internet, the phone call was even longer than that. Uh, when you hear the tone of the rep, obviously he's fairly insistent. He feels like he has a job. But what, what do you make of his general demeanor? I think he's overzealous. <laughs> I think he's been told to save clients. He's in the client retention division. And it's also possible, which is my suspicion, that there are bonuses for certain retention numbers, and he's probably trying very hard to attain a certain number that the client is not aware of. Right. Well, he continues working. Let's hear a little bit more of what happens in moments later. We'd like to discuss, no. please. Okay, so why is it that you don't want the faster speed? Help me understand why you don't want faster internet. Help me understand why you can't just disconnect us. Because my job is to have, is to have a conversation with you about having about this. I mean, keeping your service, about finding out why it is that you're looking to cancel the service. Okay, uh, fair enough. So he he states his position. I guess he's pretty obvious, right? Or I should say, honest about what he's doing. Well, if you're in his position, if you're training him, listening to what he's doing, what would you tell him at this point? Um, pack your bags. <laughs> Did, uh, I, he uh, didn't listen to who, who trained him. I find it very hard to believe that Comcast is teaching people to literally be on the verge of abusive that this person is because what he's doing is not listening to the customer. At no point does he stop his goal of keeping him on the phone and persisting with him. He just becomes more and more and more irritating, even though we can agree that the customer is – sort of not in a real state of calmness because he knows that he's taping this poor rep who is unaware of what he's doing. So the calmness on the part of the customer is also false because I can't think of any normal human being who would have stayed as calm. I would have done what I recommend that people do, which is hang up call back and get somebody else and make sure that that person listened to what I said. If he waited a long time on hold, he would never do what I just suggested. Uh, isn't part of the training for these reps, though, to get answers, just like this guy is telling him, to find out why? Yeah, but don't you think there's more than that stupid way of doing it? <laughs> I mean, you could say, look, I, I appreciate you want to get rid of our service or you want to disconnect our service, but I need you to help me out if I could just have another minute of your time because my job is to find out why because it helps us to improve our service and get him to align with the customer service rep who's trying to find out why you disconnecting the service and then engaging them in a conversation to try to keep the service. Now, this man was moving. At some point, you have to face the reality that this person doesn't want the service anymore for something that is totally reasonable, which makes the customer service rep unreasonable. Right. Well, it, it, it continues to escalate, so let, let's hear <laughs> what, what happens next. This phone call is a really actually amazing representative example of why I don't want to stay with Comcast. So can you please cancel okay. our service? So, so from, from, okay, but I'm trying to help you. Okay, okay. You you can, the way that you can help me I right now, by doing all this. the way I'm that you can help me is by disconnecting our service. That's how you but can how help me. how is that helping you, though? How because that's, that what that's what I want. Explain to me how that's helping That's what I want. Okay, so why is that what you want? Because that's what I want. Okay, so, I mean, there has to be some sort of reason behind it. That, that's what we're trying to find out. 
I'm trying to help you, apparently. That, that's his message. Do you think that's something they tell them to tell the reps, I'm trying to help you? Yeah, but that's, that's a total um, distortion of what they mean by telling the client, I'm trying to help you. He has really distorted what he, was, what he was trained to do. Now, I'm a trainer, and I can have a room of people and go listen to them on the phone after I tell them to do something, and they are distorting what I said. So he clearly distorted what he was trained to do. And... He just feels like he's in the right, and there's something a little nutty about it. Is there a way of, of saying what he's saying, but in a different tone maybe, that uh, would have been more appropriate for a rep? Yes, but there's also a certain period of time where you're, I teach people that once you have to force a client to say no more than twice, you've crossed the line. And most people don't believe me, but there's a, there's a very short fuse that mm. most people bring to the phone call. This man was falsely calm because he was taping him and he was trapping him. So he wasn't doing what a normal customer would do, which is raise their voice, be annoyed, and mm. ultimately to get what they wanted, hang up and find a different customer service rep. No twice. So they, they, a customer may say no once, you maybe proceed a little further, but the second no, you immediately stop? Well, you, you should really have given him what he wanted at that mm. point. I mean, what the customer service rep didn't do from the beginning was properly engage the customer in a way where the customer had a little bit of empathy for his point of view, which is, I really need to know why people disconnect their service. It helps us to get better. So before I do that for you, could you please help me out? And then the customer probably would have told the truth. Now, the customer, my understanding was he was moving. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself, ends the conversation, so it makes the customer service rep's whole conversation bordering on psychotic. Right. Well, it didn't end there. We'll play one last piece. <laughs> this, is, this is near the end. Kat, listen to this. I'm trying to help our company be better. That's my job. I, I can guarantee you right now you are doing you an and incredibly and good job at helping your company okay. be worse. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm terribly sorry that, that, that it feels like I'm... I'm I mean, it sounds to you like, like, like it feels like I'm trying to argue. I'm just trying to help you out and get some information. We'll just bypass all this information. I'll go ahead and disconnect this service, okay? Fantastic. I mean, it's really a shame to see you notice something that can't give you what we can. I mean, it's great. So he apologizes, and he says, look, I'm sorry. I, I know it sounds like I'm trying to argue with you. Um, how, do, how do you think he brought this thing in for a landing? He crashed. <laughs> he crashed 10 minutes ago. The fact that we're looking at the dead body <laughs> doesn't mean like, I mean, this conversation was really pathetic, like three minutes into it, honestly. It was just painful to listen to. And the fact that he was taping this person, and we know this person got in serious trouble, caused Comcast to have to do a public apology. But again, it's very hard in a large telemarketing and customer service situation to monitor everybody really, really close. You trust that people get the basic gestalt of what your attitude is, and he is totally off the mark. Yeah. Well, but, but I mean, do you think he is really just the tip of the iceberg, or is, is this some kind of a rare instance for, for Comcast? I'm not a Comcast client, uh -huh. and I wouldn't know, but I can tell you that I do not have an experience like that too often, and I would never let it go that long because I would never be that calm. I'd be nuts. I would hang up. But I think that he is really, really, really trying to do his job, and he's terribly off. So you're a customer. When you call in, you don't get the service. You like you just hang the phone up and try again. Um, do you ever do you ever escalate to a manager? Does that ever help? Yeah. yeah, I usually when somebody is acting as nutty as this guy after three minutes, I'd say, look, you need to do something for me. What you're doing is unsatisfactory. You have to get me to a manager. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're training people, uh, is it common that you meet characters that kind of uh, take this approach like this guy did to get a little aggressive? Um, I think that people that do this for a living sometimes find that it works on some people who are not really moving and really, really want to disconnect, and he used the technique on the wrong person. I mean, you can't treat everybody like a nail just because all you own is a hammer, and that's what it feels like he's doing. He has one technique. It works on some people, and he used it wrong on this particular customer. You, so you'd fire this guy off the bat and not even a second chance for him? 
oh, I'd just be furious at him if I was his supervisor. And the person who had to answer to the higher ups at Comcast because she or he is responsible for this person mm-hmm. probably got yelled at also. But you can't. You can't assume that an entire customer service division as large as Comcast is represented by this one-off person. He's an outlier. He really really is. Although I I wonder, do you think there is a culture, especially when you talk about these divisions that are meant to maintain customers, where they are pressured to keep a customer on the phone and to at least go through some points to try to keep them on board? Am I allowed to mention another company? Please do. Okay. A friend of mine called Verizon and said, you know, can't handle the bill. I've got to cancel everything, and in order to retain him, they cut his bill seriously. Okay. I mean, they cut it almost in half because he is, you know, experiencing financial difficulties. And their way of handling it was not to badger him and say, well, you know, stop drinking Starbucks so you can afford your Verizon bill. What they did is they took pity on him and they gave him a really serious break. Now, they may be doing that for a certain number of months, but the person at Verizon did a far, far better job. My friend had a reason that he was willing to share. And when it was financial, Mm -hmm. they didn't just say something cruel. This kid is just not listening when somebody says, I'm moving. Tell me why you don't want the best service in the world. Because I'm moving. (laughs) I don't want it. Maybe he's moving to a place that Comcast doesn't cover. It doesn't matter. So he's not listening. And the biggest problem is when you want to be good on the phone, you have to listen. He didn't listen. Well, in fact, they were talking over each other at one point, so yeah, not a lot of listening there. Gail Goodman, communications expert. Find her online, phoneteacher.com. It's phoneteacher.com. Gail, thank you. Thank you for having me.